Welcome back guys. What we're going to do today is we're going to set up a small 20 by 20 by 20 Komodo and this is going to be for our recently acquired Hogner Miami Wolf Spider or Common Wolf Spider. Now these are one of the medium sized wolf spiders they're not particularly big so this size enclosure will be absolutely plenty and we've Gone for this particular one because the wolf spider is a terrestrial spider and they do like to roam around a little bit. So we're going to put it in here. We're going to set this up and then also this will double up as a breeding enclosure as well because I already have a, a mature male who's dying to meet a lady friend. So we're going to get her set up in here. We're going to give her a week to sort herself out and then we're going to pop him in and see what happens. So what we're going to do, we're going to have a bit of a mixture of substrate and we're going to go with some of this, some of this beardy life. And I've used this with some of the other wolf spiders that we had. And it seems to work really well. But we're also going to mix in some of our beasty substrate as well. And this is just going to break it up a little bit because these guys, they will, they will actually make small burrows and things like that. And they'll get sort of dug in with that. Now we've also got some small stones here. This is just like a path shingle type of thing. I'm literally just going to put a sprinkling of that in. This is all now really just for aesthetics, just to give it that little bit of a, more of a wilderness looking sort of um, depth to it. We'll just put a little bit more of this in because, now these guys are found pretty much throughout America, Florida. They're very, very prominent in Florida down that way and as you can imagine they're, they're, they're out in the grasslands and the scrub areas around buildings I think you'll find that the the Hogna Miami is a little bit like our house spider or our garden spider they're found pretty much everywhere there's not many places where you won't find one so we're gonna have a little bit of that in there what we're going to do now is I'm going to put, put a piece of bark in, really just as a backdrop to, to cover up the back back area of the, of the glass so we don't get to look at it. So that when we're looking in through the front here, we get a nice sort of backdrop there. That's the idea. That's, that's, that's why that's, that's going in there like so. Let's just squeeze that in. Keep it nice and simple, really. Um, a little bit of stone here. Sometimes we get things and we we put them in and then we change our mind. We don't like it. It's all a bit of a bit of playing around, really. So we're going to have a reasonable sized water dish there. These guys do like a drink. Now, um, we're also gonna put in some moss, which we're gonna stick in there like so. Now, with the wolf spider, they're all pretty much the same. They're, no matter what wolf spider you go for, their general care is very, very similar. So, Although they do like it really dry, they will tolerate a moist area. And by putting in a small piece of moss like this, we can keep this piece of moss here damp, but allow the rest of the enclosure to dry out. And this will give the spider the choice. It will now be able to decide whether it wants to sit on a damp area or sit on a dry area. It will choose whatever it so wishes to do, which is exactly what we really want it to do. We want, we want it to you know, work out for itself where it wants to be. 
And we're just going to give a little bit extra here. Because like I say, these guys, they will they will move around. They, they've, they're very much into exploring their environment. So we're going to put a little bit, a little bit of extra in there there. I think um, we probably won't really need much else to be fair. I think that's probably going to be good enough. You see, we've got other bits and pieces here, but we don't we don't necessarily need to use everything. Well, I think that's going to be okay. So what we're going to do? We're going to fill our our water bowl up without splashing all the glass. He says. Mm-hmm. Let's do it there. So these are, as we were saying, these are a terrestrial spider. And they're a very, very active spider. They're an active hunting spider as well. And they are pretty quick. So we do have to be careful. Now these are what we class as a true spider. If you like to come over, what we're gonna do, oh, well, we'll take the lid off and I get a nice look at her. There we go. And you'll see there with their eyes, they have a full set of eyes on the front of that head and they're absolutely, you'll see the shape of their head is very sort of dome shaped with their eyes on the top. And they go from forward facing eyes to sideward facing eyes. And this gives you a, an indication that these guys will actually run down prey. If they see a cricket or a roach or something in the undergrowth, they will physically go after it and hunt it by sight. Whereas most of your big tarantulas and things like that, generally speaking, they actually react to vibration and things through the air and through the ground. And this is how they hunt. And it's not until they're absolutely on top of something that then they will actually look as if they're, they're, they're going at it through vision. But these guys purely hunt by vision. So what we're going to do now is we're going to try and get her to... How are we going to do this? Let's see if we can just get her to go down there because they, they can be quite quick. We just want to take her gently. No, we don't want you coming up this way, do we? No. You're going to go the other way. Nice and gentle. I'm going to hang on my paintbrush now. You see how dexterous they are. There we go. She's in there nice and easy. Now you might be able to see there that we were saying about the eyes. You can see how they're set on top of the head. Now she took off there because as I'm talking, I'm breathing on her. And that change in air environment was enough to set her off. Very, very pretty spider. We need a little bit of light. That work. How's that? As you can see there, the camouflage on her. Bearing in mind, these guys are in the scrub. So they're down on the floor, in amongst the grasses and things like that. So this camouflage keeps them away from, stops birds and things like that seeing them and munching them up. This one here is an adult female, so she's pretty much full grown. They don't get much bigger than this, but these are a really fascinating spider to keep. Very, very active. And as you can see there, you don't need a huge enclosure. Something small like this. This is one of the things that, um, that I really, really enjoy about these spiders, is the fact that you can set up a lovely little enclosure like this and you can have a number of these on a shelf and they don't take up any space whatsoever. So it gives us more reason to have a few more, doesn't it? Which is always a good thing. 
So what we're going to do now is we're going to allow this girl to settle down. We'll give her a week or so to make home. They don't actually lay webs like our tarantulas do. So what she will do is she will find a little area in there, probably underneath here or something. She'll find a little crevice and she'll make that her home. And that's where she'll sit and she'll wait to ambush bits and pieces. And then if nothing comes along, she will physically go out and look for stuff. So she will go on the hunt. Now, as regards to food for these guys, keep your items small. Don't They will take food items almost as big as themselves. But if you want the best out of your spider, give it small items. You want to give this something like roaches that are about the size of its carapace, which is quite small. That's a roach about this big. It's not very big at all. You might sit there and think, oh, that ain't much of a meal, is it? But the thing with these things is you want to feed them little and often rather than a big meal, blow them out. You want to, you know, you, you will see, if you give this a big meal, its abdomen will be huge the next day. As soon as it's taken on all that fluid, it will be absolutely huge, which is what we want to avoid. So you must, in my opinion, keep the food items small. That will keep her abdomen at that healthy size that you see there now. We don't want to get any bigger than that. And then we can feed her more often. So she will take on um, a small roach, Every sort of five to seven days, she'll she'll have one. Um, and maybe if we go for even smaller ones, we will feed her two in a week. You know, we just see how she reacts and what she's doing. If she's really, really active, we'll give her another roach and this will settle her down again. So we want to try and keep them on that point where they're active so that we can see what they're doing because these are really fascinating spiders, very, very interesting spiders to keep and to watch. You can put one of these on your desk as I know one of our viewers actually has, uh, yes, she has got the Carolinensis, Linda, she's got the Carolinensis on her desk, which we have one of those as well. We will do a showcase on one of them later on. But um, yeah, you can keep them in a small thing like this on your desk, keep you amused for hours. So there's a little insight into the wolf spider. And as we said earlier, they're very, very similar. They're all, they're all pretty much identical in the way you keep them. Uh, very, very little in it. These will tolerate big, big changes in temperature. So we can be down to the 70s, up into the 80s. They're perfectly happy. They'll tolerate an awful lot. Um, in regards to the humidity, we like it fairly dry, but with a, a slight a humidity of around about 50, 60%, more than enough. Perfect. And if you give them the choice, you'll find sometimes they'll be sitting on the moss, sometimes they'll be sitting in the dry. All depends on what they require at that given time. And no one knows better than the spider itself. So give them the choice. All right then, well, I hope you enjoyed that. Nice little uh, little look into the, the crazy world of the wolf spider. Well, don't forget, be calm, be gentle, and love your spider. I'll see you soon, guys.